Hello everybody, it's Mr. Olson, aka the Bob Ross of Science. Today what we're going to be doing is working through drawing a couple diagrams that show how rivers can change the surface of the earth. So, um, the materials that you would need would be um, a piece of white paper, if you have some colored pencils that's going to help, a sharp pencil, a ruler is nice too. So let's get started. Um, what we're trying to do is to show how a river channel forms over time. So. You take your piece of paper, and what I did was I folded it in half right away. And then what I'm going to do is on this side of the paper, I'm going to draw a line across the midpoint. And we're going to start by drawing one bend in a river. And a bend in a river is called a meander. So we'll put a title at the top. This is a meander diagram. Okay, meander diagram. And the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create the curve of our river. So we're just going to start over here. We're going to come up across. When we get to this part over here, I want my river to kind of open up into a lake or perhaps into an ocean. So we're going to make our big curve bend of the river here and then kind of open up into a lake over here. All right, so here's our river channel. Um, when you're looking at a river channel, the water that's flowing through the river um, has to move along the curve. And what you might know, if you're in track, for example, you might know that the outside lane of a track um, is kind of a farther distance. So if you watch people who are racing, a lot of times they'll move towards the inside curve of a river, or excuse me, inside move of a track, because they want to be kind of taking a shorter path. Everybody fights to be on the inside. There's a shorter distance along the inside of this curve which means that the water that's moving along here doesn't have to go as far. The water that moves along the outside of this meander has to move farther. And water generally likes to stay together. So what that means is that the water that moves along the outside of the meander is going to speed up. The water that moves on the inside is going to slow down. And when water has different amounts of speed, it has different amounts of energy. So we're going to draw some arrows in here to represent the strength of the current, the speed of the current. So if we take a look at this particular me meander right here, the water that's moving along the outside is going to be going very fast. So we'll put an arrow in here. It's going to be a long arrow. When we see arrows in science, we call them vectors. A vector is any sort of a quantity that has both a size to it, which is called the magnitude, and a direction. So in this case, our arrow here represents um, fast moving water that's moving in that direction. If we worked our way closer towards the inside of this meander, we would see that the water would be going a little bit slower in the middle, and even slower as you got towards the inside. And then finally, next to shore over here, it would be going slowest of all. Now realistically, there's a few more factors that have to do with the flow speed of a river. For example, like the depth of the channel plays a factor. Um, but in this diagram, we're going to keep it as simple as we can. So we have four different vectors that we drew. And in general, we would see that on the inside of the curve, what we have is we have some slow moving water. Slow flow. And on the outside of the meander, we have fast flowing water. So as you draw your diagram, make sure that you're kind of putting the captions into slow flow and fast flow. <clears throat> so the water that's flowing very slow, it doesn't have much energy. So we're going to say it has low energy. And then out here on the outside of our meander, we have high amounts of energy. Since this water has so much energy out here, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be cutting into the bank of the river and it will be collapsing the bank. So we're going to be capturing sediments here that fall into the river. So I'm going to draw some a little cloud of sediment that has fallen in. The, the water is cutting away the bank and sometimes you get an undercut bank where it's not very stable. If you were walking on the shore, it could collapse and you could fall into the river. Also, fish like to hang out if you have an undercut bank, too. So there's ways that you can kind of like 
fish these spots and maybe catch some of those fish. Uh, when the water cuts away the bank out here, what we're seeing is we're seeing that erosion is happening. So we want to label that as erosion. And what forms is called a cut bank. So this landform along the outside of the meander is called a cut bank. Cut bank. All right. Now on the inside, slow flowing water with low amounts of energy is not going to be able to carry sediment. So if you think about it, you know, this is a river, which means there's sediment that's moving in the current from previous spots where it was flowing. So we have all this sediment that's being carried along. And if it's being carried in the current, most of it's going to be swept along. However, when you get to the inside of the meander where the water slows down, um, instead of carrying along, it starts to become deposited. So the opposite of erosion on the outside is deposition. So we would see that deposition is happening on the inside of this meander. Deposition. So we can take our sediment and start to draw that in. It generally forms kind of a, a lens-shaped deposit that forms on the inside of a meander. Here's our little lens-shaped deposit. You might think of it as a sandbar, but the technical term for it is a point bar. So we're gonna draw in a little point bar. Now, if you were like an old gold miner way back in the 1800s or even today, and you wanted to go try to find some gold, the spot that you would mine is right here because when the water slows down, it drops the heaviest material first, and you know that gold is very dense and very heavy. And so you would have a deposit inside this point bar, and that's called a placer deposit. So you could, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna try to shade it in with yellow as much as I can. So that's where you would be likely to find your gold, is here on the inside of the meander, and the landform is called a point bar. Cool. So if we take a look at this meander, we're almost done. Um, really, the inside and the outside have opposites. On the inside, we have slow flow. On the outside, fast flow. On the inside of the meander is low amounts of energy, and on the outside is high amounts of energy. We have erosion going on out here, and the opposite of that is deposition. And we've removed sediment to make a cut bank, and we've deposited sediment to make a point bar. So really the inside and outside of a channel of a meander have opposite things occurring. Okay, so one other cool thing. Um, let's take this sediment that's flowing along here that got collapsed from this cut bank. Here's our sediment in the river channel. It's flowing along. Once the river channel straightens out, um, like in this little patch right here, you would have water that's you know kind of evened out its speed. So we're going to draw some vectors that have equal lengths to show that there's equal amounts of velocity or speed across the channel. And once that water gets to a lake or a pond or an ocean, a spot where the channel widens out, <clears throat> the energy that's contained in that water is going to dissipate. Not disappear, dissipate. So here's what we're going to say. We'll say that energy dissipates, which means it spreads out, dissipates. And what that means is the energy that was focused in the channel now spreads out. So we're going to show that when we get to this lake, um, instead of long arrows, we're going to divide that current into a whole bunch of very tiny arrows so that the power is spreading out. And when it spreads out like that, when the water slows down, that again, the sediment has to drop. So what we're going to find is we'll have the largest sediments that are deposited here close to the mouth of this river or stream. And as we get farther out, we would have smaller sediments. So we're going to throw in the smaller sediments would get carried a little farther, even as the water slows down. So we'd get some smaller stuff out here. And finally, like the sandy particles would travel a little farther And the mud and clay particles, which are tiny, they're going to actually typically carry far out into the deep parts of the water, and they would deposit way out here. And so like the bottom of a lake or bottom of an ocean, 
that's going to have your finest sediments that carried pretty far before they finally settled out in the still water. Energy dissipates and what we form is we form overall kind of a fan-shaped deposit and that's called the delta. You can find deltas where a river flows into an ocean. Um, around Alexandria we have lots of streams that connect different lakes so if you're fishing near the inlet where there's a little stream coming in a lot of times you'll find like a sandbar which is a miniature delta and that's a great spot to fish because the fish hang out right here and they just wait for things to be washed in so they can go snatch them up. So we drew one meander right here. What we're going to do on the next side of our diagram, we're going to flip this over and now we're going to take a look at how a river channel will kind of change over time. So what I did here on this side of the page is I folded my page into quarters. You can see I folded it in half this way and then I folded it the other way. And then I traced a little square so I could number them one, two, three, four. We're going to show a progression over time. So our first picture, um, we're going to show a wide-necked meander. Wide-necked meander. So we're going to have our, our river channel coming in. And the neck is going to be kind of in between. So let me draw it and then we'll check it out. So here's the outside of our river current. It's looping around in a big old meander. And so we'll make that into a river now. Trace the other bank. Okay. The neck of the meander is right here. This would be land. So if we want to really show that that's land, we might throw a couple little happy little pine trees in here just so we know that that's land. Okay, cool. We got our nice little forested spot here. Looks great. All right, now, like we saw in our last diagram, let's throw in a couple um, vectors that show how the speed of the river changes. If you keep in mind that water has to move the farthest along the outside of the meander, which means it has to go faster. So we're going to have some speedy flow out here, fast flowing water slow flowing water on the inside, medium in the middle. And so really, if we think about it, I'm going to use red here to indicate where the erosion is happening. So along the outside of this meander right here, we're going to have some erosion going on. We're going to cut that bank away over time. I'll even label it erosion. So that bank's going to be cutting away. The river is going to flow around here, and when it gets to this spot, look, once again, we're on the outside of the meander. So we're going to have fast flowing water on the outside, which means that we will have more erosion going on right over here, too. Uh-oh. All right, so if we were to let that continue and develop, what we would see here later on, maybe, I don't know, five, ten years later, depends, we would see that um, the neck of the meander got smaller. It shrunk down because it kept getting chewed away with little nibbles out on each side. So in our next um, diagram here, this is the same meander later on, we're going to form what's called a narrow-necked meander. Okay, so we're going to draw our channel, and this time we want to make sure that we pinch that neck in a lot closer. So I'm going to come in a lot farther. Here's my meander. Oh, I hope I didn't bring it in too much. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, man. Oh, man. Whew. Just made it. All right. So, again, um, we'll throw a tree in here just so we know that this is actually land in between. 
Okay, cool. So that's land. Um, look what's happened. The river has continued to erode right out here. And it's continued to erode right here. And that meander neck has gotten smaller and smaller. Now think about this. What if I, what if I was a farmer? And I was farming out here. And I had a farm field. These are all my rows. Okay. You know, fertile ground is next to a river. When the river floods, it carries a lot of sediment out. And so a floodplain where the river would periodically flood and um, deposit new soil, that's going to be great farmland. One problem, though, is, look, um, if this neck of the meander gets narrow over time, I'm probably going to have a hard time getting out here to access this. This might also be really good hunting land because you have sort of a protected spot with water all around. The deer and birds would feel safe out there. Well, if this is your hunting land or your farming land, you're losing access to it because the, the access road here is getting eaten away. Crazy. So we've developed a narrow-necked meander. Now, what do you think is going to happen if the water continues to erode? We'll mark that with some red. Here's our erosion. It won't be long before the water might actually cut right through this narrow neck. And if the water has a shortcut, a path to follow there that's shorter, why would it continue to flow all the way around? It wouldn't. So in our next diagram, we're going to show that it has cut through. Okay, so it has cut a new channel. A new channel forms. So in this case, this one's kind of tricky to draw. Um, we're going to have the new channel of the river going all the way across. Okay, we still have to kind of map in where the old channel was. So we're going we're gonna to draw here and then around. Here's the old path of the river. The river used to go all the way around here. I'm not trying to be crude, but it kind of looks like a toilet seat. That's maybe the easiest way to try to draw it. It sort of kind of looks like a toilet seat at this point. Okay, so um, <laughs> the water now is continuing to flow straight past. Now, you might still have little bits of water that flows through here, but it's going to be going slow. It's going to be slow moving water. Most of the water's current is flowing right past and skipping that. This is my farmland, which now is inaccessible to me. I can't get to it anymore unless I want to build a bridge. Or maybe this is my hunting ground, which was so great, and I can't get there anymore unless I build a bridge. Think about this. If the water is slowing down, that means that the sediment that was in the water is now going to start being deposited. So this old channel of the river, which was being flushed out before, is now starting to fill in with sediment. So this whole back channel of the river gradually is going to fill in completely with sediment until um, it becomes choked out. So this whole little passageway here, we're going to shade in to show that it's getting filled in with sediment. And over here too, it also gets filled in with sediment. And so what happens now is we've actually separated We've separated out this old section, and it's an abandoned channel of the river. The river's not going to follow that path anymore. It ends up being kind of a, a bow-shaped or like U-shaped body of water. And even though it's not a lake, it's called an oxbow lake. So this area back here, what you would see is it would start to fill in with like cattails and swampy plants. A lot of times we see like trees fall in here. It gets choked out with brush. It becomes shallow and muddy. It's a good spot for, for like waterfowl to land if they're migrating. They can get off of the river into calm water and kind of chill back here for the night. And then they can quickly hop back on the stream in the morning. So if you're hunting an oxbow, which is what this is called, an oxbow or oxbow lake is kind of a good spot to hunt. A new channel forms um, and then an oxbow lake is created. We might just call it an oxbow. An oxbow is created. And this is the oxbow, the abandoned channel. 
called an oxbow. Now we can take this a step farther. Over time, since water is not flushing the sediment out of the oxbow, the oxbow itself completely fills in. So our new channel is going to go past. The water just cruises right along. Meanwhile, our oxbow out here um, has completely filled in with sediment. So what you would see is a ghostly scar on the landscape. You can sometimes see the shape of where the oxbow used to be, but it's completely filled in. And it can get filled in to the point where you could farm it again, for example. So this like ghostly scar where you can sort of see the remnants of what used to be an oxbow, that's called a meander scar. And we're in a minute here, we're going to hop over to Google Earth and we're going to check out and find some of these things in real life. This is called a meander scar. And to caption that, we can say um, the oxbow fills in with sediment. All right, so last glance before we move over to Google Earth. Remember that each scene here is the same spot. It's like we're hovering over a spot and looking at it over time. We started with a wide-necked meander, but the water eroded away the neck bit by bit until it became a narrow-necked meander. And once the water managed to punch through that narrow strip of land, um, it cut off the old channel and formed an oxbow or oxbow lake. And over time, the oxbow lake can fill in completely and become a meander scar. So that's your completed diagram. What I would like to do now is to take you over to Google Earth. And one spot that we can go is great to see these. It's called Oxbow, North Dakota. That's the name of the town, Oxbow. So we'll zoom in here to Oxbow, North Dakota. The river we're looking at is the Red River. The Red River flows to the north. Now right here in Oxbow, we can see most of the features that we were kind of drawing in our diagram. Right here, this is a wide neck meander. Um, this is the neck right here. So we can see it's got a fairly wide neck. The water's flowing to the north, which means it's curving around in this direction. So we would be having some erosion going on right here. And it would be deposited on the inside of the meander. Now look, um, this next meander that we'll look at here, this is a narrow-necked meander. Look at how narrow this neck is. So the water's eroding away at this part of the um, neck. And then when it flows around here, again, it's eroding at that side of the neck. So this narrow strip of land is getting eroded from both sides. And whoever owns this little patch of land, this might be great hunting land, think they're going to lose access to it. So we see here in the same picture, a wide-necked meander here and a narrow-necked meander here. Let's zoom out a little bit and try to find an oxbow. I think I found an oxbow right here, <laughs> in fact. Um, so this little curved body of water is an oxbow. And here's an interesting thing. We can tell that the river must have followed that path at one point. And an oxbow is maybe not super useful, but look what they did in Oxbow, North Dakota. They turned this old back channel of the river into three different water hazards, and we're looking at a golf course. So they incorporated this oxbow into the golf course. That's pretty creative. That's pretty cool. Now we want to try to find a meander scar, a spot where we can find an oxbow that's been completely filled in. I just went a little bit to the south of oxbow, and look, here's another one. Here's an oxbow that is filling in. The stuff that we see on the edge is probably cattails. And you can see that the channel is kind of gradually being choked out. There's another me or excuse me, another oxbow right next to it. This is interesting because we can see a tiny little trickle that might still be going from the main river into that oxbow. But it's mostly getting filled in with cattails. Here's another oxbow. Really cool. Now to find a meander scar. I'm zooming past, look at all these oxbows, all these abandoned channels. The river used to go through all these, and over time, the rivers become straighter. So one thing we see is that over time, rivers develop a more efficient system of drainage. They're able to 
um, straighten themselves over time and the water will flow better. We could consider this to be a meander scar, a spot where the river used to flow through this channel and it's been there for so long, there's maybe a tiny little wet patch right here, but for the most part, it's completely filled back in with, with earth. And so now we have a meander scar. So you know what to look for now, and we're gonna be doing some work with Google Earth here throughout the course of the week on a landform scavenger hunt. And we'll point you to some different rivers like the Red River here, and you'll be able to find some of these spots and try to identify different landforms. All right, thanks for sticking with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the screencast, and um, we'll catch up with you next time.